everybody and welcome back to my vlog and today I want to show you this now this looks a bit Frankenstein-y and it is a little bit Frankenstein-y and it goes to show though that even Frankenstein even without the right hole cutter sizes uh, I'm just using what I got and um, same on that side I've only got a 20 mil hole cutter and really I needed 19 mil and I only had um, the mains cable 30 amp mains cable and that's what this is it's not really what I want to be using I need to be using this this has got a 2.64 millimeter diameter this is a lot more um, a lot more robust uh, than that and you can actually bend this you know I've managed to form this around a handle of a broom in order to get me uh, the amount of um, coils I want turns which is about six turns six turns and but this is how I, I set this up and I want to just go over a couple of things with you because I found I had a bit of an issue uh, with it and when I connected up I, I'll explain that more but to give you a bit of a better idea of what it is and these are oversized, I know, I didn't know what, um, I don't know if I'd been drinking that night or whatever, I didn't realise how big M10, 10, 10 would be, 10 millimetres, I can know it now, I've learnt a lot since I bought these, <laughs> about the size of these things, never really had to buy them before. Um, but yeah, so these could be done with smaller uh, which make it cheaper, but they're, they're, they're copper. This is copper clad, double sided copper clad, uh, where if it was nice copper sheet, that would be even better. And if you were good with a saw or had the proper equipment for sawing and doing uh, better still, I don't. And so I, I sort of Frankensteined mine together. But I'll, I'll show you it um, on the VNA, on the Nano VNA. In a moment let me just take you to the screen and show you what it is we got here so my old cockatoff i hope i've pronounced that right my apologies if i haven't as thankfully shared with uh, us this now let me just quickly show you in a photo what this is to help me with now you see in the photo you see there in the background there's a um a transmitter big tower there's two of them there's one a bit further back to the left as well that you can't see but it's there and between the two of them they make my life a bit of a misery on two meters if i don't attenuate and block out a lot of their signals what it does is it it just overdrives the front end of my little radio my little yezu uh, down there or even any other radio that I've had. I had a different radio and I actually got rid of it because um, it didn't have an attenuator built in. The little Yezu's got an attenuator and it does help. It doesn't uh, eliminate altogether, but it does help. But what happens is then the weaker signals, they, 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 they get sort of squashed out by the front end being overloaded and it can't deal with everything. So, you know, it, it's not a good thing. So here are the sizes of the bits and pieces so it's all there it's all great it's all there and you can see this i'm i'm pointing to this bit where the uh, the so239 socket is and the inner the outer connects to the double side copper clad so all this is going to be electrically connected to each other and um the inner goes to what looks to be about a third on the turn if that were a turn that would probably be around about a quarter or a third uh, but this is, we're going to point this out in a minute, um, as a, and, I'll, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So there it is, and you've got to remember, the, and then the two ends, as you can see on mine here, the ends there are out of phase with each other by 180 degrees, the way they're connected in. So you've got one up here, and the other one starts at the bottom, down there, just like on here, bottom, one up. And, um, yeah, it's to help uh, VHF receivability to the VHF receiver dramatically. Uh, this is because the front end can be, you know, messed up with all the uh, out-of-band frequencies that can uh, can uh, go through it, go, uh, go through it. So, 
here this shows um, what the insertion loss would look like yeah and so here he's got his like, 0 dB that's pretty good it's going to be a little bit off uh, that but this uh, goes to show that's very very good the insertion loss is minimal and round about 150 megahertz about 140 is there or so um, that, that that's pretty good it is very good uh, now I tried uh, six millimeter copper wire with this that's absolutely no good the wire diameter is 2.6 uh, yep if I had noticed that when I first did I could have saved myself some trouble and this is what this is 2.64 uh, to be exact and uh, but it's uh, it's it's you, you can use it you can turn it and you can do anything thicker and that's gonna be very difficult and uh, don't bother buying six mil not like I did it came through the post I thought what on earth is this I just sent it straight back there very good very good um, and so here we can see a bit closer up um, the actual uh, filter loss you get to see the the, 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 the loss here so around about 0 0.3 2.5 0 0.3 um, minus DB that's pretty good and that's a nice shut off point and it also helps then that if you do have a uh, trans transmitter that's kicking out dodgy spurious uh, signals you know from the, from the fundamental uh, it will actually help reduce all that as well, which is another good thing about it, right? Um, but this is what I want to show you. Uh, that's very nice. Somebody who obviously knows how to cut things and got the right size cutters and bits and pieces. That uh, makes mine look uh, very, very bad. This is all metal. This is all copper. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, you get to see here on this. So I'll, I'll pull a link for, the, um, for this um, particular PDF. And now you get to see it again in the copper. But this is something I wanted to show you. Now, what I'm going to do is before I actually show you, I'm going to connect this up. Let's see if we can get that to back out a bit. Yep. Connect this up. Oops. Now, when you uh, set up for this, make sure that you do any, that you make sure that you do the. Um, the calibration for the uh, through well do all the calibration so normally for the SWR you would only do three you do the uh, open short and the dummy load right on the next one down I can't remember what it's called um, let's just have a little quick look so I'll just show you on the next one down uh, calibrate uh, calibrate you got this uh, isolation so make sure on the end of here, you would have the um, uh, dummy load. And on there, if you don't have one, don't bother. Or if you have, stick it there. But that's how you do for the isolation. Then the other one's just through the next calibration. And that just means you're connecting both of these ends together. This one will be connected to this one with whatever adapter you've got to do that. And you calibrate that. And then that's that done, all right? So, but you need that because you need the through for this blue logmatic, uh, log mag um, line here. Now, what I want to show you is this. So, you know, don't look to this to be absolutely spot on right at this minute in time. This is still work in progress. I just want to show you how we're going along with it. And if you put on a lid, it adjusts it there. Something to show you. Take the lid off. Put the lid on. All right, we got adjustment. And... Um, at the minute, it's a little bit up and downy. You see, you get a bit more wider there, but it's a little bit up and downy because I've got these little skinny wires in, and we've got to change out for the thicker stuff that I'm showing you. So that's going to help that. But what I found, and this, oh, it had me going for a while, so many adjustments, and I couldn't get anywhere, was that this, the VSWR, this uh, one here, I'll just put and they also say 1.5, 1.4, but it's not tuned in as good as what it could be. That's on 144 megahertz, as you can see. Let's just turn this around. And um, but the VSWR, yeah, where this insertion loss here on the blue one is showing about minus two dB at the moment. Uh, this was about 30 megahertz out down here. I couldn't get it to line up. No matter what I did, I just couldn't get it to line up. And I was playing around. I was 
adjusting these phases, a little tiny bit in and out, and this, expanding it, making it smaller, bro, bro, all this playing around, and I couldn't get anywhere that was driving me nuts, and I actually got a little bit depressed over it, because I just couldn't get anywhere with it. And then I went back through the images, and I'm looking here, and I can see, yeah, that it's got it connected, you know, this is the turn, it's connected there, and this is the turn, it's connected here, Yep, yep, and then same here, same here, so oh, oh, it's all good, it's all good, right? And I'm not a mathematician, I can't just work this out with a whole bunch of complex formulas and bits and pieces. I can't do it, I'm sorry, I'd like to, oh, I'd love to be able to do it, but I can't. But then I noticed this, and I thought, oh, so I zoomed in. Hello, I thought, let me just move that, oh, all right, let's just move it a little bit less, there we go. I move that down. Oh, let's move it back across here. And as you can see here, see this? This is on the second one. This is on the second one. Now, I've not even done it just for the sake of it. I wanted to show you, it makes no difference. But I've not even done it on that one. As you can see, looking at the screen again, look, that would be on his left inductor. Yeah, these plates at the capacitors, they're. Um, these copper plates the capacitors and you can adjust the capacitance by screwing them in and out and the inductors here so here's one is on here uh, sorry on on this one here where well, I've moved my one down here and I put it there uh, it was a mistake right it was a mistake um, and I, I put it there and I tried it and all of a sudden pop this came into line with each other this came to be Oh, stop it. This came to be where I wanted it to be, which was the maximum VSWR trough um, is in alignment with the maximum peak of the uh, uh, mag, log mag for the insertion loss. So, if you're going to build one of these, there you, go. you can save yourself a bit of time there. Um, and I will change it around. I'm going to be changing it around. I'll put this in. I'm going to see what any difference makes. But I'll do a different video because this one, I just wanted to show you this. And next one that we do on this, we'll be actually showing it set up with the thicker wire in there. See what the differences are. Hopefully we get a bit more width on the bandwidth. Well, we may not get much. But I'm, I'm hoping we might just get a little bit more width on the bandwidth and a little bit narrower on the... Um, on here a bit more dropping off at the sides don't know gonna have to play around with it but that's the whole idea about these sort of things you play around with them not everything um is set absolutely precise but as a starter as starting to get there this is pretty darn good um it's you know you don't have to be a great professional as you can see the way mine's ragtag together uh, which means it's open for everybody to be able to do because if i can put something like this together and get it near enough married up uh, the way it's supposed to be that's uh, one that's a great to um, to a mile there um, I hope I've said his name right for showing this to us and providing the, the information there and it's great uh, if you're not that brilliant and you don't have the equipment to do it as well as what he has and uh, yeah so so that's that that's just a quickie to show this and you can see if I move this to one side, I'm just twizzling it backwards. And you see what happens. Look, we lose uh, the VSWR tune. If I start twizzling this capacitor back this way again, and look. And it goes all the way down, peaks, and then starts coming back up again. But if we look at that, that's at like 1.2 there at the moment. And that's just the way with this the way it is. If I put the lid on it, that does move it a bit. As you can see, look, take that off. See the VSWR is, see, you want a lid on it, stick a lid on it, and uh, and then you can move that around again, but that's set for 146, if I just move that down, that's 1455, that's 145500, so that's right in the middle of where we want to be, so I can adjust this to where we want to be, oh, but there's quite a lot of adjustment you can do there, but it is going to be a case See, that's moving the uh, the other inductor. And you can move it across the band. But between the two of them, 
some playing about and you're going to get this thing where you want it to be and that's going to make a great filter um, for stopping uh, out of band what you're using signals coming through and saturating the band that you're on making it very difficult and also ridiculously noised um, to have these noises on there And having it coming across, but there you go. So that's what I'm going to show you for now. And um, on the next one on this, um, I'll show you it uh, working. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And um, yeah, this one's been a bit of a toughie to do because uh, it's all been hands on with the with the with the doing and. Oh, I don't have the confidence in myself for doing this sort of stuff so much. But I'm really glad uh, today when I've just moved that. It's just uh, moved this in line. Like I said, it was like 30, 30 megahertz out. And I couldn't, no matter what I did, it wasn't making any difference. But now I've got it pretty much where I want it to be. But I'm going to change that the other way around. I'm going to put the other coils in, play around with that. And we'll see where we go from there. Catch you in the next one. Take care of yourselves. And, um, oh yeah, if, if you've built this, if you've had a go at building this, or you have the same issues, if you get um, loads of uh, horrible noises across your uh, two meter band, uh, let us know. Let us know what you've done to solve that. And if the measures that you've taken to do that actually work or not. Because so I can see you can just go and buy filters. I don't know if they work. Uh, but it would be interesting to hear of any experiences that you guys have had in relation to this. So, with that, again, bye for now. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.